here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. A human rights group in Berlin, Germany, has filed a criminal complaint against the architects of the George W. Bush administration's torture program. The European Center for Constitutional and Human Rights has accused former Bush administration officials, including CIA Director George Tenet and Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld, of war crimes, and called for an immediate investigation by a German prosecutor. The move follows the release of a Senate report on CIA torture, which includes the case of a German citizen, Khalid al-Masri, who was captured by CIA agents in 2004 due to mistaken identity and tortured at a secret prison in Afghanistan. So far, no one involved in the CIA torture program has been charged with a crime, except the whistleblower, John Kiriakou, who exposed it. In a statement earlier this week, Wolfgang Kallack, general secretary of the European Center for Constitutional and Human Rights, said, by investigating members of the Bush administration, Germany can help to ensure that those responsible for abduction, abuse and illegal detention do not go unpunished, unquote. Meanwhile, President Obama's standing by his longstanding refusal to investigate or prosecute Bush administration officials for the torture program. In a statement, he called on the nation not to, quote, refight old arguments. As Obama continues to reject a criminal probe of Bush-era torture, former Vice President Dick Cheney has said he would do it all again. Cheney spoke to NBC's Meet the Press Sunday. With respect to uh, trying to define that as torture, I come back to the proposition. Torture was what the uh, al-Qaeda terrorists did to 3,000 Americans on 9-11. There's no comparison between that and what we did with respect to enhanced interrogation. Uh, uh, it worked. It worked now for 13 years. Mm -hmm. We've avoided another mass casualty attack against the United States. We did capture bin Laden. We did capture an awful lot of the senior guys of al-Qaeda who were responsible for that attack on 9-11. I'd do it again in a minute. Cheney's claim that he would approve torture again highlights a key question. Are top officials above the law? And will the impunity of today lead to more abuses in the future? The question spans a wide chain of command from Cheney, President Bush, and other White House officials who kickstarted the torture program after 9-11 to the, to the lawyers in the Justice Department who drafted the memos providing legal cover to the CIA officials who implemented the abuses and misled Congress and the public, and to the military psychologists who helped devise the techniques inflicted on prisoners at U.S. military prisons and secret black sites across the globe. To talk more about this, we're joined now by two guests. Michael Ratner is back with us, President Emeritus of the Center for Constitutional Rights, chair of the European Center for Constitutional and Human Rights. Uh, CCR has been working with the European Center to file criminal complaints against Bush administration officials complicit in the of torture. He's also the author of The Trial of Donald Rumsfeld, a prosecution um, uh, by book. Martin Garbus is also back with us, one of the leading attorneys in the U.S. Time magazine calls him one of the best trial lawyers in the country. National Law Journal's named him one of the country's top 10 litigators. We welcome you both back to Democracy Now! Yesterday, we were talking to you both about Cuba. Today, we're talking about um, all the news that has come out. Um, Martin Garbus, uh, should President Bush, um, should George Tenet, should uh, Donald Rumsfeld, um, should Dick Cheney be put on trial for torture? They should be. The bad thing about it is they all have a defense they can rely on. They have the defense of the lawyers' opinions that were given to them, the opinions of Gonzalez, Bybee, and John Yoo. And unless you can pierce those decisions, you have a very tough time. It seems to me a prosecution that ends badly, and I think it would end badly in the United States, might not be one that we bought. But what should happen is, with respect to those lawyers, though, when John By uh, J. Bybee was elected to the uh, Court of Appeals in 2002, was nominated and then, and then voted upon by the Senate, and John Yu presently teaches at Berkeley University. At the University at the of California, California. Law School. At the time that uh, Yu was uh, appointed to Berkeley, there was a mass demonstration of students against him. At the time that Bybee was uh, nominated for the judgeship by Bush, uh, he was uh, 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 criticized, but you did not yet have all this information. What Senator Leahy has said, that if you had all this information, 
uh, Jay Bybee never would have passed. Clearly, if you had all this information that you have now, John Yoo wouldn't be appointed. What should happen is there should be complaints filed in the bar associations. They should be suspended and this disbarred. Then, perhaps, if you have a prosecution, you've already have established the, the faultiness, the horrific faultiness of the legal opinions. So it seems to me, at least in this country, a condition preceding, as we lawyers say, before you can have a prosecution, has to be the invalidation of the legal opinions. Mm. And I want to just say, I'm not here uh, to debate Marty on this. <laughs> He's a defense lawyer, um, but I strongly disagree that Bush, Cheney, et al. would have a defense. Um, this wasn't like these memos just appeared independently uh, from uh, the Justice Department. These memos were facilitated by the very people uh, Cheney, et cetera, who we believe should be indicted. This was part of a conspiracy so they could get away with torture. But that's not the subject here now. Um, I just want to—so that, so that, that, that is clear to me. Secondly, whatever we think of those memos, they're of uselessness in Europe. Europe doesn't accept this, quote, golden shield of a legal defense. Either it's torture or it's not. Either you did it or you didn't. Uh, and that's one of the reasons, among others, why we're going to Europe um, and why we went to Europe uh, to bring these cases through the well, European Center. I, I wanted center. to ask you about that, because uh, as the clip we played of President Obama saying it's no use refighting old arguments, but you are, in essence, refight, refighting arguments in Europe that the United States refuses to deal with. But, of course, you know, Cheney just sh showed us exactly why you have to have to prosecute torture, because if you don't prosecute it, the next guy down the line is going to torture again, and that's what Cheney said. I would do it again. And now, the European case is really interesting. We did try this in 2004. You covered it here. We tried it in 2006. You covered it here. But now, because of the Senate report, we have a much stronger case in Germany than we ever had, particularly with regard to a German citizen, Khalid El Masri, who was taken off the streets of Macedonia, sent to the salt pit, which is known as Cobalt, Wait, in the Senate report. Explain that. Tell yeah. us that yeah. story. It's, it's a remarkable story. He was on a bus? He was on a bus to take a vacation in Skopje, in Macedonia. Uh, and he gets pulled off um, by agents of our government, uh, gets taken off the bus, gets, um, you know, sodomized, essentially, with a drug. and then gets taken from there uh, to the salt pit in Afghanistan, which is a CIA black site torture center known as Cobalt in the report. He's there for four months. Everybody knows by, at some point along, this is a mistake. Uh, there was another guy with a similar name. It wasn't this guy. Even after they're told that it's a mistake, um, they leave him in there and they leave him to be tortured. They finally, at the end of this, just take him out of there and they drop him off somewhere. Condoleezza Rice was involved with this, Condoleezza right? Condoleezza Rice, and so is this woman. They held him further because they realized they had been torturing the wrong man. <laughs> That's correct. And the European Court of Human Rights actually weighed in on this case, and what they did is they held Macedonia liable for allowing that kidnapping on their streets and fined them. And they found that what happened to him on the streets of Macedonia was torture. Um, so, Who else well, was we, involved? I, I want to go to, a, go to Khalil Masri in his own words, describing his time inside a secret CIA prison in Afghanistan. Einzige in diesem Gefängnis in Kabul ein bisschen besser als die anderen behandelt wurde. I was the only one in this prison in Kabul who was actually treated slightly better than the other inmates. Wir waren in dieser Zeit nun Häftlinge in diesem Gefängnis. Und, und die wurden die waren bevor in Dunkelheit oder Musik Gefängnis ist unter der andere Häftlinge bekannt. Dort wurden die but it was known uh, among the prisoners that other prisoners were constantly tortured with blasts of loud music, exposed to constant onslaughts of loud music. Aufgehängt an der Decke in unbequemen Stil, fünf Tage lang, ganz nackt in der Kälte. And they were for up to five days, they were just sort of left hanging from the ceiling, completely naked in ice cold conditions. Diese Tansania, von dem ich vorher gesprochen habe, hatte drei Brüche an dem Arm. The uh, gentleman, the man from uh, Tanzania, whom I mentioned before, had his arm broken in three places. Verletzung an dem Kopf und die Zähne. He had injuries, uh, trauma to the head, and his teeth had been damaged. Sie haben ihn auch in einen kleinen Koffer gesperrt, längere Zeit in diesem Koffer. Uh, 
roch nach irgendwas so ekelhaft, wo er sich ständig übergeben musste. They also locked him up in a suitcase for long periods of time, foul-smelling suitcase that made him um, vomit all the time. Auch andere und uh, der Kopf unter dem Wasser getaucht. Uh, other people experienced the forms of torture whereby their heads were being pushed down and held under water. That was Khalid al-Masri describing his torture in a CIA black site. Michael? <laughs> well, yes, and they knew he was innocent. And there's a woman who was just identified, uh, who has been identified for a long time, who works for the CIA. Her name is Bukowski, Alfreda Francis Bukowski, who apparently was one of the people who insisted, even though there was people in the agency saying that we got the wrong guy, who insisted on having him picked up and taken there. Uh, she's also uh, apparently one of the models for uh, the woman in uh, Zero Dark Thirty. Um, and Jane Mayer recently wrote an article about her, as I think called the Queen of Torture or something like that. Didn't identify her by name. But she is one of the defendants in the lawsuit in Germany. And let me just say, Germany, whatever happened before between the NSA spying on Germany and the fact that their citizen is now been revealed to have been kept in a torture place uh, when it was known that he was innocent, I'm pretty sure that Germany is going to take this very seriously. And I had just spoke to a person you've had on here before, Scott Horton, who's the, a columnist for Harper's as well as an expert on national security. And Scott tells me that because of these cases we have filed in Europe, that over a hundred CIA agents have been given advice that they should not leave the United States. Let me just say, what we're going to win here in the end, I can't say. But that already, to me, is a major victory. A major victory would be to prosecute the lawyers themselves, because otherwise what's going to happen in the future is you're going to have activities like Cheney or whomever. You'll have people in the CIA and the NSA relying on faulty legal opinions. So I think a strong emphasis in the United States has to be to stop future lawyers from doing the same thing as was done here. And your point is that these memos, they consciously knew that they were violating a torture statute. Knew, and I think Michael is right, of course, that they were doing it under the chain of command. And Cheney and the other people. But I think that's very difficult to prove, and I think you should go after the lawyers immediately and of course, now. Since that time, uh, for, uh, John Yu is an eminent professor at University of California Berkeley Law School, and uh, Bybee was elevated to a judgeship. <laughs>